What's up everyone? Today we're continuing on with the 240SX rear end rebuild by finishing the limited slip differential swap. If you haven't seen my previous video, I talked about how part two of the rear end rebuild was actually going to be split into two parts because the video started to get so heavy with all the stuff that I wanted to talk about and I ran into some parts issues, had to order things, had to get some stuff from overseas, you know, typical project car stuff, but now everything is ready to go and we can get this thing buttoned up. Full disclosure, I am by no means a professional mechanic, nor do I pretend to be. This is the first time I've ever attempted to do something like this, and while everything turned out great in the end, it wasn't without its difficulties, and I'll talk about that all throughout the video. My main point for doing this video is to just kind of walk you guys through the process and show you all the stuff that was done. I'm going to make some mistakes here and there, so bear with me, but like I said, it all turned out great, and I cannot wait to get this thing back on the road. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Also, support the brands who have supported this build so far. People like Ting Tools, Milwaukee Tools, and Quick Jacks. It's made doing this a whole lot easier. I just picked up the casing from the powder cutter, and look how good it turned out. Just like the subframe, they thoroughly cleaned this beforehand. All of the grit, grime, and old paint that was on it before is gone. The new finish is flawless. Even the inside is clean. This, when it's all back together, is going to be a real focal point of the rear end. Like I said earlier, this isn't just about swapping in a limited slip diff. It's about giving everything that you see here a complete overhaul so when everything is put back together, it's for all intents and purposes like a brand new differential. That being said, I've tracked down as many new parts that were still readily available through Nissan that I could to do this thing right. I got new oil seals for the side flanges and pinion gear, and all new hardware such as bolts, washers, lock washers, nuts, even the drain and fill plugs. I also went to the trouble of finding the little vent tube that goes on the back of the differential cover. So, funny little side story, I obviously had to get all new bearings for the differential, but there weren't any companies that made master bearing kits for this car, so I had to track down all the individual parts through Nissan Genuine Parts. They had all of them except one, and I was like, oh my gosh, if I can't find that one bearing that I absolutely desperately need. <laughs> so, I scoured the internet, and the only place that I found that still had them was an online retailer in the United Arab Emirates. So, that obviously took a little bit longer, but I got the actual Nissan part. Thank goodness. Just another example of unexpected project car delays. You gotta love it. Reassembly isn't all that hard, but good organization skills definitely come in handy. This guy's so optimistic. <laughs> Off to the left, I have the ring gear side. Off to the right, I have the pinion gear. As you saw, I already torqued down, have everything ready to go with the ring gear and the LSD. I have the new side flanges. I have the outer races, the shims, the brackets in the same order as they were when I first took them out. Also, it's important to remember, there's a lot of metal-on-metal -metal contact inside a differential. Therefore, as you reinstall pieces, coat them in a nice layer of oil first. I didn't realize until after I got the casing back from the powder coater that I completely overlooked the races for the inner and outer pinion bearings. So again, if you're doing something like this, double check, triple check, quadruple check to make sure you got everything out of there because it didn't come out with everything else and I had no idea to check in the first place. Um, <laughs> of course the powder coating process completely ruined them but since I'm putting new equipment back in it didn't really matter but it's just like oh my gosh. <laughs> so let's start off at the pinion side. First, I'm going to take that gear oil and run it around the inside lip to reduce friction. It'll make installing the outer race and bearing a whole lot easier. Again, those two pieces need to be coated in a generous amount of oil. Once they're set, I can go ahead and press in the new pinion oil seal. Actually, take it from a guy who wasted two pinion oil seals before finally figuring it out. Don't put that thing in until everything else in the differential is assembled. Let that be one of your last things because if you mess something up, if something's not right or has to be adjusted and you have to pull that thing out, you're pretty much going to ruin it. With the pinion oil seal in place, it's now time to press in the side flange oil seals. Now you can put the side oil seals in here because they're pretty much independent of all the moving parts. So if you do have to take everything back out for some reason or another, they can stay in place, so we're safe. 
Before reinstalling the pinion gear, give it a quick once over. Make sure there's no signs of excessive wear on the gears and that the bearings are in good shape, that they spin nice and smoothly. If everything checks out, you're ready to go ahead and reassemble everything and put it back in the differential. There's a big metal sleeve that goes over the pinion gear shaft as well as a little spacer that needs to go back just like how it came out. All you have to do is reinsert it, apply a little bit of pressure, and wait for it to come out the other side. You might have to put a little bit of elbow grease in, but it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Completely ignore the fact that I was trying to do this with using the bearings and races that probably were in this car since 1989. Just Let's just bypass all of that because the new parts are on their way in just a few minutes, I promise. <laughs> The last thing I have to do is reattach the pinion flange. This thing serves a few different functions. It connects directly to the drive pinion as well as the drive shaft. It also serves as a dust cover to protect the oil seal underneath. Before fitting it on, it's a good idea to put some anti-seize on the threads just to try to guard against corrosion later on down the line. But it's pretty simple, just fit it on, apply a little bit of pressure both on the gear side and on this side to kind of sandwich them together, and once the little dust cover is resting up against the casing, you're good to go. Conceptually, I knew what I was doing, you know, the general process behind everything, but turns out I didn't really know what I was doing. So after all of that, I decided it was time just to bite the bullet and take the differential to a shop who actually knew what they were doing to get it all finished properly because when I was putting everything back together, some things just weren't sitting well with me. It was kind of difficult getting the pinion side finished and I wasn't really sure if the bearings were in that good of shape or not. And when it comes to potentially having to adjust for preload backlash, being that I've never done any of this before, I didn't want to leave it to chance because a differential is such a crucial piece of equipment to your car, especially a car like this that's going to be getting a lot more power added to it later on. I did some research and found a local shop called LNR Transmissions. They're in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, so if you're a native of the area, definitely check them out. All the contact info can be found in the description below. They were awesome. I actually went in on a Saturday so we can film all the clips without distractions and they walked me through the entire process, showed me what I was doing right, showed me what I was doing wrong, some general tips and tricks for the future. I mean, it was a great experience. Keep them just so you keep your left and right separate so that you can throw your shims on the bolt and keep them, keep them together and keep up with them. That's going to be your next common mistake. Now, if you're changing this carrier, which you did change, right? Yeah. So there may be some adjustment that needs to be done on this to get the preload and the backlash just perfect mm -hmm. um, because the stack height of this, right. the machined height of it may be different. Just press down on it. Oh yeah. You feel that? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't it feel, feel it. It feels kind of rough. Yeah. Is it, and you almost feel as a spin it, you'll feel a bump, 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 bump. Kind of like there's trash in it or something. Right. And that's exactly what that'll feel like when you have a little bit of mileage on one that's either been pressed on by that raise yeah. or has, if it went through shipping with these bearings, mm. then just load of it, how it was packaged and how it got handled and dropped and stuff, it will do the same thing. It'll just ball peen like you're hammering it. You know, you just keep putting flat That's spots in it. Probably a good idea. We're changing the bearings anyway because yep. this is how I got it. I right. got it with <clears throat> these bearings. I would always change this. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't like that. I didn't think that that would last very long. All right, so this is a race out of somebody else's div. That is bad. Oh, I see. That, that. is. Pits in the highway bad. Right there. And every time a roller passes by one of those, it chips a little bit more out of it. Sheesh. That is not even worst case by any means, but this is noisy to the point you can hear it when you're driving a vehicle and you'll yeah. also start getting pinion leaks or axle seal leaks or something like that. Seals don't leak because they're bad. Yeesh. Never seen one leak because they were bad. It's either been tampered with or it's because you're making metal somewhere, yeah. which is giving you that all grainy, gritty crap, and it's running through the seal, and it's eating away at the seal. Gosh. So then it'll start leaking. You go, okay. Or you have parts moving around because there's some slop in something now. Yeah. You know? Yours looks like <laughs> this is one of yours, but that is not. That is smooth to the touch. <laughs> That's like what uh, is that? What does that mean? It, it's like powder coat that's stuck to it or something. I don't oh. know what that is. The one that's straight up and down, 
is the drive side. You're pushing against that with the pinion when you're on the throttle. Right. When you let off the throttle, now you're putting pressure on this side of the tooth. This is the coast. Wow. A little quicker, right? That's awesome. <laughs> I can smell the oil that you're talking about now. Yeah. <laughs> You'll smell of burnt good oil. Mm. That thing is insane. <laughs> there is your pinion depth shim. Oh. Drop somewhere, you know, drop some stuff here and there. Yep. So this is the old one. Look how much different it is from the new one. Wow. We have a little bit of normal damage done to the case. We've got a little... My fault. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody and anybody has done that. If you work on anything, you're gonna do that exact thing with the exact same tool for the same reason. So we got a little bit of a low spot. We've sanded down any high spots. We plowed the field. So we just sand down the high spots. So all we're dealing with is the dip. Now we have a metal clad seal. So we're gonna put something around it. Just kind of fill up that gap. And I just put it evenly around just so it's nice even. That's what we're doing. Let's get that started. I've got a race that fits around that pretty nice. I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing there, but you're holding the pinion and then trying to get holding the, the pinion, together. but it's got to be held up slightly so that you're whacking down on this, but not pushing up into the seal that you're gonna mess the seal up. Oh, so I'm having to just <laughs> barely like I'm hitting the seal right there, so yeah. I don't want to push up any more than that. So I'm having yeah. to try to gauge how far up I'm pushing while I'm hammering. You can hear the change in the gun when yeah. it started getting tight. Now, it should not go any tighter than that because you don't have a crush lead, you got shim, so it's it's where it's at. It shouldn't be any tighter than that ever. Feels nice. Unless you put a three-quarter gun and a thousand foot-pounds or something, it's just, yeah. it's not <laughs> gonna crush down any more than that. So we got it where we want it. Now we just take this thing apart, we're gonna clean all that oil off and then we'll do the a little bit of silicone under the nut, a little Loctite inside the nut, and that'll be the end of that part. Man, honestly, when, oh, yeah. you, when you're building a diff, that thing should have about five miles on it before it even goes on the road. I mean, it's I turn them, I turn them, I, I let the oil kind of settle. Yeah. Because if you put a lot of oil on a bad bearing or a bad install, it'll feel good. Yeah. With a lot of oil on it, and then the oil runs off of it, and you'll start feeling some grainy or a little choppy or something to it. Okay. But, you know, just just a nice, smooth, even, no choppy, no you know sticking like it was doing before. Right. Stick, grab, release, grindy feel. You know. Yeah. It's just nice and smooth. It's got a nice start to it. Nice stop. It doesn't feel jerky or, you know, like it's stopping and you're grabbing and taking off again. I know I want more preload, but I also think I want to clamp it down, torque it, torque the caps, and I want to see if that backlash tightens up any and measure the backlash. That may be a little bit excessive. They run these. You said the spec was a little tight on these, yeah. right? And just a little thumb rock of a pressure. You don't want to, because if you put too much on it, you're moving the pinion right. and it's changing the whole setup. But just a little bit of the free travel. And it's got us at six, six and a half. That's just really slick, man. It's like glass. That's awesome. Even with no oil in it. Just a little bit that we put on the bearing. That's great. 
Again, huge thanks to LNR Transmissions for allowing me to get in there and film all of this stuff. I learned a lot and it was a really cool experience. The most important thing that I took away though is that you can do all the research, you can have all the tools, but a certain level of experience goes a long way when it comes to rebuilding differentials and swapping all of this stuff because there's so many just tiny little things that could be easily overlooked. Plus, now I have peace of mind knowing that it was actually done correctly, so I'm pretty happy about that. Now that I'm back home, let's go ahead and put all of this back together. I have a brand new gasket from Nissan. All of that hardware that I showed you earlier, we're going to go ahead and get the cover back on and then throw it back in the car. Since Nissan still makes differential gaskets for these cars, I went ahead and picked one of those up instead of trying to make my own with RTV. This way, the final product is a lot cleaner and just like it would have been from the factory. Plus, a nice layer of high-tack gasket sealant on the casing and the cover will create a nice tight bond when putting everything back together. I'm pretty sure this differential had been out of the car before because if you remember, when I was first taking everything apart, there wasn't a gasket to remove, nor was there really any evidence of RTV, so I'm not sure what was going on there, but at least now it's all set up properly. Of course, when tightening down all of the bolts, I went in a crisscross pattern to make sure all of the pressure was evenly distributed. Before finishing everything up, I went ahead and got off some of the extra gasket sealant so I can paint that exposed metal. I also installed new drain and fill plugs. The last thing I put on was a new vent tube on top. I ended up replacing all of the cover studs as well, but I'll talk about that more in just a moment. This thing is looking awesome. It's unfortunate that once it gets back in the car and goes down the road, it's going to start getting dirty and not a whole lot of people are going to be able to really see and appreciate all of the detail that went into this, but at least I know and I'm really proud of it. Just imagine how good everything is going to look with the new suspension arms, axles and more. It's just going to be so sweet. Look at that. Perfect. One of the studs on the back of the differential cover stripped while I was tightening down the little nut. No idea why I was going off of the torque specs. Everything was going on great, but I, I think the torque specs were wrong, so useless. Go off of the factory service manual. The torque specs are a little bit more accurate. I have found it is what it is, total learning process, but thankfully Nissan Genuine Parts still has studs in stock, so while it's a bit of an inconvenience, it's not that big of a deal really. I'm gonna swap out the studs, put some new nuts on, and we'll be good to go. But anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you at least learned a lot. Again, trust the professionals if you don't know 100% what you're doing. This was a fantastic learning experience, and if I ever do it again, I'll at least have a better understanding of what's going on. But if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like below. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.